Welcome to Rosny College Electronics series of videos. In this video I'll be examining how electric circuits can be drawn and introducing the physical quantities that arise from studying them. Here's a diagram showing a basic circuit. It's going to have a battery. And some conductors. Resistor. LED, complete the circuit, put some values in, so 9 volt battery and 470 ohm resistor. Okay, you'll notice that I use symbols rather than trying to draw what the components would look like and well, what the actual circuit might look like. And this is because, firstly, I'm not a very good artist. And more importantly, because components that serve the same purpose may look completely different. So here are some example components that do look completely different, but also more or less the same purpose. So we've got, these are all capacitors. We've got an electrolytic type, got one of these polyester types, and another polyester type, and ceramic. Okay. Um, so you can see they're all quite different in both their size and their shape and they are also different in their construction to some degree. Um, so it's easier to draw a symbol that represents um, each of these and then try and draw what it might look like especially if you decide to change your mind or your design later on. It also makes design of circuits much simpler to create and to interpret. This circuit contains the three absolutely essential elements. We have a battery or power supply. This provides the energy to make the circuit perform its function. We have some conductors, uh, usually metal wires that carry the current from the battery to other parts of the circuit. And we have a load, in this case a resistor and LED. And this is something that converts the electrical energy in the circuit into other forms such as heat or light. Um, you can also get movement, sound, and various other things. The load is, performs a task within the circuit. In this case, the LED provides light, it might be an indicator, and the resistor limits the current going into the LED, allowing it to function correctly. We will look at why an LED needs a resistor in another video. A control element is usually needed to make any circuit practical, so a way to turn it on and off. So oh, I'm going to draw a switch in there, so I just need to modify my circuit slightly. Okay, so that switch there allows me to turn the uh, turn the LED on and off. Okay, um, I'm going to draw another circuit that's even more simple than this one, so I can show you some of the key concept in, concepts involved in the electricity. So this circuit. Again, we need a battery. This one's only going to have a single resistor. We've got 9 volts. Now we're going to label the terminals positive and negative. And a 470 ohm resistor again. So you notice here I've used the symbol omega to represent ohms. And up here I used R. Either of those is fine. R is usually easier because it's easier to type into a computer. The battery is the source of energy in this circuit and is what provides the push needed to force the electrons or to make the electrons move through the circuit. What the battery really is doing is giving some energy to those electrons and increasing what we call the potential or voltage of them. Think of it like the ability or potential to do something. In this case, move the electrons through the resistor here. If there is a pathway for the electrons to travel, then it will. Then they will. So they need to be able to travel from one terminal to the other terminal of the battery. So if I were to draw in another switch to break this circuit, 
open it switch then what happens is the electrons let's say we've got an electron here that's my symbol for an electron they cannot move from this part of this wire to this wire or this part of the wire because there is nowhere, no pathway for them to travel remember the electrons have to be within the metal for it to function properly if you have a look at what's happening here the negative terminal actually acts a bit like a a negatively charged particle and the electron which is a negatively charged particle is going to be repelled by those that negative terminal bit so the electron is going to want to move this way okay? if the circuit is open it can't move it'll want to move but it cannot move and so it's a bit like traffic building up at a red light if I were then to close that switch so we've now closed our switch these electrons can move through another wire here what's going to happen here is that the negative terminal here is going to repel this negative electron the positive here is also going to attract this negative electron if you remember the wires have the effect of containing the electric field within them and so the positive is going to be pulling the elect negative electron all the way through so we're getting a pulling and a pushing effect on this electron which makes it tr want to move through our circuit this is what we call electron flow so the electron flow the direction that the electrons move and it's from the negative terminal to the positive terminal okay so the electron flow is this direction anti-clockwise in this circuit however we have what we call conventional current and that is simply the opposite direction and that's the result of historically they didn't know whether it was the electrons that were moving or the positively charged particles that were moving in the metals and they had a guess and they got it wrong so they theorized that it was positively charged particles that were moving and therefore they would have to be going from positive to negative for the most part in this course all you need to remember is that conventional current which is what uh, we refer to is from positive to negative so don't worry too much about the electron fly just remember that conventional current is from positive to negative now if we didn't have something to remove the energy from this electron then the energy of the electron here would stay here and then have more energy added to it and eventually something's got to give so what actually happens here is that the electron loses its energy as it goes through this resistance now remember that if I add energy to an electron I increase its potential or increase its voltage important there so if I'm going to be removing energy from that electron I'm going to be removing voltage or decreasing its voltage uh, from the uh, of the electron there Okay, so we're going to see a voltage drop across this resistor. Now you could sort of think of this in the same sort of terms as, um, as friction. And it's actually a very similar effect. Imagine you have a ball and it's on a hard wooden floor and you roll it along the floor. Roll it along the floor and eventually slow down and then stop. Okay, that's because the energy that you've given it in giving it a push is then being converted into heat and sound as the ball is rolling along and the friction of the ball with the floor and the air and things, other things and eventually it'll stop because it's run out of energy okay. so in the same way that we gave energy to the ball making it roll the battery here is giving energy to the electron increasing its voltage and then this resistor is taking away energy from the electron decreasing its voltage eventually we go back to zero volts doesn't mean the electron stops moving 
this means that it doesn't have as much energy as it did before. If I were to increase this voltage, then you, in the same way that if you increase the how hard you push that ball, then you would see that the ball would travel further and for longer. Okay, so there would be more energy in in the ball to be dissipated. Likewise, if I give the electrons a harder push by increasing the voltage here, then I would see more energy being dissipated through this resistor. I would see more current flowing. Okay. So we can say that if I have a voltage and I increase it, then it's going to be proportional, meaning if I increase the voltage, I increase the current. So we're seeing an increase in the current, so it means it's proportional to current for a resistance. Okay, so we can sort of formalize that a little bit. You can formalize that in a formula. So we can say that, oh well, right, if we're saying voltage is proportional to the current for a given resistance, then the voltage equals current multiplied by something. So there's some sort of constant amount, which is the resistance. Okay, so if the resistance is constant, if I increase V, then to keep this equality, I need to increase I. Now we use I come from the old French word for impetus, um, for current, and uh, this is known as Ohm's law. So we can sort of see how this might work, play out. Imagine if I have the same battery but I make the resistance larger now, so instead of being 470 ohms, it is 1000 ohms, or 1k. I have 1000 ohms there, then there's going to be more resistance. It's kind of, if we revert back to our ball rolling along the floor, instead of rolling on a nice smooth wooden floor, we're now going to roll it along carpet. So the carpet is going to offer more resistance, so we're not going to be able to travel as far or as fast. So what's happening here is the electrons, we're going to get fewer electrons traveling through with the larger resistance. Okay, so reduced current. So if I increase the resistance, keeping the voltage the same, to keep this equality, if I make this bigger, this has to be smaller. Okay, so we could say that I is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. Okay. I could also say that resistance is equal to the voltage divided by the current. These are all equal, well, the same formula, I've just rearranged them slightly differently. So they're all Ohm's law. I think we'll leave it there.